in his personal appearance. He's addicted to battle arena Toshin death. For safety reasons, we may view only a few seconds. Do not underestimate the power of PlayStation! This is Mount Baldy in New Mexico. It's the USA's second lightning hotspot. When the hot, wet summer wind meets the mountains, it's forced upwards and makes thunderclouds of virtual certainty. Researchers fire rockets trailing a wire behind them up into the thundercloud to channel lightning bolts to the ground exactly where they want them to hit. KQP 492, this is the Cupola Tower to West Knoll. Would you please keep us apprised on any launch preparations? An electric field meter shows the charge on the mountain rising. Each time there's a lightning bolt, it drains some of the cloud's charge and the fields drop sharply. To trigger a strike, they must time the rocket launch perfectly. The aim is to fire when a natural lightning bolt is imminent and electric fields are at their maximum. The lab's research cameras capture every successful trigger on tape. Lightning will strike anything that stands high above the ground. Trees are the favourite target. The lightning runs through the tree's sap, instantly vaporizing it. A strip of bark can explode like wooden shrapnel and travel outwards at lethal speeds. We don't even know what guides lightning's jagged path, or why it chooses to strike in one place rather than another. All we do know is that the path is first created by a trickle of electricity that rushes outward from a charged region high inside the cloud. It begins as a small spark inside the cloud five miles up. A spurt of electrons rushes outwards, travels a hundred meters, then stops and pools for a few millionths of a second. Then the stream lurches off in a different direction, pools again, and again, and so on. Often the stream branches and splits. This is not a lightning bolt, yet. It's called a stepped leader, an intensely charged channel leaping and branching down. As it gets close, its electric field begins to exert a pull on the ground. When that step leader is within 10 or 100 meters of the ground, the ground is now aware of there being a big surplus of negative electricity, which has come down on a conductor. Certain objects on the Earth respond by launching little streamers up toward the step leader. Uh, weakly luminous plasma filaments, which are trying to connect with what's coming down. If you happen to be standing there, maybe a streamer is going to leave your head and, and, and head toward that step leader. A telephone pole might launch a positive streamer. A blade of grass might launch a positive streamer up toward the step leader. It's that special one which makes the connection which gives rise to the return stroke and then this, this catastrophic 10,000 ampere current flows. That, that closes the switch. When that connection is made, the electrons drain to earth in a blinding bolt of light. 
The part of the channel nearest the ground will drain first, then successively higher parts, and finally the charge from the cloud itself. So the visible lightning bolt moves up from ground to cloud as the massive electric currents flow down. These positive streamers only exist for a minute fraction of a second. Photographs of them are extremely rare. Here, two streamers left the treetop, but only one of them successfully connected with the descending stepped leader. A nearby telegraph pole also launched a positive streamer upward, a failed lightning bolt. August 17th of 1985, I was photographing a storm at Lake Catherine near my home, and a bolt of lightning hit three feet from me in that storm and literally threw me away from my equipment. I landed on the ground about 15 feet away, and when I got back up and I ran over to get my equipment, I reached down to get my camera bag, and three feet the other side of my camera bag, there was a hole in the earth and it was still smoking. Being caught anywhere in the open in a lightning storm can be dangerous, although there are ways to minimize the risk. There's only one place that is entirely safe, inside a metal box. This cage at the Boston Museum of Science is just that, a metal box with a lot of holes in it. It's called a Faraday cage. Metal has low electrical resistance, so the current flows through the metal rather than through whatever is inside. and we travel inside a giant metal cage each time we fly. The average jet can expect to be hit once every year, despite the fact that pilots go to great lengths to avoid thunderstorms. Or rather, most pilots. In the 1980s, NASA flew a fighter plane right through the most violent thunderstorms. They wanted the plane to be hit as often as possible to learn exactly what happens during a plane strike. They were more successful than they'd ever hoped. The plane's metal body compressed the storm's electric fields as it flew through them. It was the plane's presence that triggered the thunderbolt. For decades, ordinary pilots have also reported seeing brief flashes in the sky above storms. Their reports were ignored. But perhaps they were true. This research footage was taken above the massive lightning storms of the American prairies. Scientists have nicknamed these flashes sprites. They're almost too faint to be visible and last a fraction of a second. They're 10 miles wide and reach over 50 miles straight up from the top of the storm. Nobody yet knows what they are or how the storm creates them. Their power and their effect on the atmosphere are still mysteries. But you need to go higher than a plane can fly before you can appreciate the real scale of lightning on Earth. Images from a low light level camera on the space shuttle show nighttime storms flickering across entire continents.
But it's not just the Earth. There is evidence for lightning on other planets in the solar system too. On Jupiter, it's actually been photographed. This violent flash of light, a thousand miles long, was caught by one of the Voyager probes as it passed. Perhaps there is lightning everywhere. We are only just beginning to realize how complicated lightning is. Perhaps we owe it to our future to learn to understand it better. I was struck by lightning three years ago. Got it! Boy! Ah, man, did you see that one? 